Move to Dorset Street, let's. Paper 10. Right, um, and if it just gives a quick summary and then we'll move to questions. Yeah, so I think Amanda's here um, for this one. Um, this is the, the Miles Warren designed um, series of, uh, of apartments at Dorset Street. Um, pretty groundbreaking for its time and um, very much a, 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 a nationally and internationally recognised piece of architecture, um, which um, has been um, severely damaged in the earthquakes, but the owners have clubbed together, which is um, quite difficult when you imagine you've got eight different owners here, that, that they all have to resolve their own in insurance issues and come together and decide to repair the building or, or not. And in this case, they've obviously decided to to do that, so um, it's, it should be a good outcome. The repair work has has started because they've had to proceed with some of the um, some of the the, the work um, to get on with it. So um, it's a um, it's a show that they've got faith in in the in the outcome of the the project. Um, anything else to add to? No, I think we covered it all. Yep. Nothing yep. there? Okay, so any um, questions for Amanda or um, Brendan? Sam? Yeah, thank you. No, I, I've probably missed it in the report, but are, are they currently occupied? Oh, no. So no. they haven't been used since the earthquakes? No, they're, they're, they're significantly damaged, so yep. they've, had to, they've had to move out. Right. Okay, so they haven't been used since the earthquakes? No, but they have been secured. That's the important yep. thing. They were, they were boxed okay. up, plywooded and, and protected. And what's the intention? So they get repaired, are they going to be owner occupied again or will they be yep. so they'll all be owner occupied yes yep. okay so they're going to sell some because it's got a few of them own a couple of flats each um i think some of them some of them own two two flats yeah <laughs> it's all that the model actually was was uh, the initial model was to, to have an owner who leased out another flat so there were the, that was the the initial design model that by miles warren that they they knew that they could they could see, sort of self-support their existence by having one <laughs> that they rented out. So that was the model. Now, I know things have moved on since then, but um, other, other people do own, yes, there are a couple of owners who own a couple of, of, of the units, yeah. but they're, they're, they have to work together to, to fix them anyway. Cause the see, sorry, it would be me not understanding. You, you're explaining it really well, but the, so the people that own them now, are they going to go and live in them after? Well, um, yeah. um, I don't have that information. Some, some of them will be owner-occupied. I think some will continue to be rented out. Right. Yeah. Well, the important um, thing is they will be fixed. Yeah. yeah. Right. There, are, there okay. are some owners who own multiple flats, and that, that's been a, a mechanism to, to help save the buildings because some of the owners have had to sell due to right. lack of finances. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Pauline? Yeah. Yes, the total cost of conservation works. It's it's a tricky one yeah. because the 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 code at the time when these were built back in the nineteen fifties, early sixties, they there was no insulation in them. Um, they're very small units, so the, the the logical way that you would you would insulate these would be to strap and line them internally. Now that would do two things. One, it would reduce the, the size of the, the unit, but also it would cover over the, the the fabric, and it's that exposure of the construction fabric which is important. So, yes, in some degrees, that, that they're going to have to accept that these are always going to be uninsulated buildings, because if if you do try and insulate them, you can insulate the roof, you can insulate the elements where you can hide the insulation, but to insulate the walls would be to hide the, the original heritage fabric. Luckily, the, the, other, the other positive thing is because the party walls, um, they're, they're like terraced houses. They don't, they don't lose heat as much because they've got a party wall as opposed to the end wall. What about double glazing? Uh, double glazing, that's, a, that's a, a bit of a tricky one because double glazing does mean you have to change the original, um, yeah. Um, I think where where it can be done without 
without a loss of heritage values, then then we we would encourage people to do that. But obviously, if there's if there's existing windows and they're perfectly fine, then then it's, it's it doesn't make sense to pull them out. Just to. to, to Won't there be a time when this, this sort of building will be uninhabitable because it won't um, comply with the health standards? Well, my house is 1870, so I, I'm still living in it. Um, I think I think you 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 adjust and you make you make um, provision for it. Yes, you may yes, have to Yes, but we can't here, more. and the thing is, this is council money that we're having, being asked to put into it. I mean, I fully support it, but I'm just concerned that with this, it's an old cold, and our moral duty to actually be, yes, help. Yeah, Carolyn, can you turn your mic on? I think it's more than building code because we've, if, if some of it's going to be rentals, there's rental standards and those kind of things yes, for insulation exactly. and healthy so, homes so and I stuff. Think, I think that, um, so, but that's for the landlord to, um, it's landlords who have to, um, who have to comply with the legislation around rental standards. But, um, but insulation and double glazing are, are, are building code requirements. So I'm assuming that the project manager and the owners have sought advice from council around. Um, Around what they require to do to to comply with building code, um, I, um, the, I guess that what we've got before you today is around the heritage fabric, um, and I think that your question around the future, um, I, I, it's useful to reflect how technology is catching up on insulation and what you can achieve. So. Um, what might be possible in the future for these buildings to meet building code and still be heritage buildings, or, or still retain the heritage fabric? Um, might be possible. We, we can't anticipate. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, any further questions? Oh, sorry, Jake. Then Phil. Then Tim. Okay. Yeah, quick one. Um, what would be the consequence of not funding? these today, but the work's already happening, would work stop, would work be reduced, what, what would be the consequence? Hmm. Well, um, they, would, they would struggle to, to complete the work, yes. Um, they've, they've had to settle with their insurance companies, there is, there is a gap, there is a funding gap, so they are seeking ways to fulfil that gap. Um, ways to, to bridge the gap, sorry. So it, it would potentially, I mean, I, I can't speak for the individual owners, but um, it certainly could jeopardise the work. But we don't know the individual finances of each owner. We, we're judging it on the merits of the, the heritage values that are being retained. Thanks. Um, did you want to yell it as you go? Just one as I walk out the door. Yeah. Yeah. Are they keeping it because it's a heritage building? But if it, if because well, it has high heritage values, so that, that's that's Thanks, why they, they have faith in it as well. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and Tim. Um, so there are eight of them, and the, is it that two are connected? And so there's a kind of separate. So I'm just wondering if it's heritage value that we're after, do we need to support all eight, or is it if we're after heritage value to protect then a unit, the two units? I think, I think although there's, there are two, there are two separate blocks. There, they are very much linked. If, if you if you lose one, it's it's it will lose a lot of the value. I mean that they were originally designed as eight units for. I mean they they were bachelor. Bachelor pads. It, that's kind of slightly two different you, things, though, aren't they? Because one is we, 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 our, our, we're just debating here about the heritage value of a building yep. or buildings, yep. but the other one is the social value of what they were trying to achieve back then. Yep. So there are two different things here, but the fund is about the, the architectural fabric of the building. Yeah, but, but there are, it, w it would be difficult to decide, for example, which of the four you would keep. You would then be telling four owners that. You're not getting funding. But you are. How, how would you do that? They, they do have. They have value as they are now. They've they've actually um, survived for 50 years without huge alteration. Um, they they 
are a, 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 an entity. Mm. You know, to, to, to lose half of it would be a significant loss you'd, and undermine the heritage you'd values. You'd reduce the architectural values quite, quite a lot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I know that there does seem to be some repetition in them, but, but, but that's, that's the point of them. They were, they were eight units pretty much the same with, with modifications made on the, on the basis of, of uh, what the owners were able to do or wanted to do with them. So, mm. yeah, I think it would, be, it would undermine the heritage values of the, of the, 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 the item to lose half of it. They okay. are listed as one item. Thank you. Brenda, can I just check the um, the amount that's recommended? Um, while it's a sort of certain percentage of the, the works proposed, uh, per unit it's quite a bit higher than we would normally do for um, dwellings of this um, of each individual size. And I was wondering if you've got any comments on that. So maybe twice as high as um, individual dwellings of that size that we've done in the past. Yeah. Well, the. The individual unit is, is works out at forty five thousand dollars per unit. Um, I, I I didn't I, that didn't strike me as being a, a large amount. We we actually re, re, reduced the percentage. You see, the percentage has gone down to twenty five percent. So it, it it could have been more than that. But that seemed to be um, an appropriate figure. Um, other comparisons we did where where funding was. Um, um, it is difficult to do comparisons with different types of building because we're dealing with, with a, a, a modernist um, concrete block building here as opposed to a timber frame building. Um, and also the, the need to, to have cross-party uh, cooperation in order to strengthen walls, for example, that are party walls. So it seemed the figure was arrived at on the basis of one, what, all of the criteria that we, we use, but... but uh, amongst them is obviously the, the, the heritage value of the building, what the owners can contribute, but also what funding is available. And the total funding at, at 360,000 seemed to be um, the, right, the right area. It gives a, a reasonably significant amount of support to individual owners, but not, not excessive. So can I just clarify though, if there had been less funding available before the end of the financial year, you would have been happy to recommend less? Well, we have to. We have to bear in mind what funds we have available to, yeah. to come up with a, with a, with a figure. Um, and, and the figure is either uh, is based on a percentage or, 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 or a more um, nominal figure to, to show support for something of, 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 this kind of, um, of this kind of work. So... Um, We've yeah. particularly had in mind the, the fact that it's an 183,000 gap for each flat between the um, insurance payout and the actual costs of the heritage works. Um, so it's a, it is a significant gap, um, which that 25% that, uh, will, will go towards and helping. <laughs> and we referred back to other... Um, buildings such as the, the Duncan's buildings, yep. which was a, a row of buildings in High Street that we made a contribu contribution to. Yeah, and they um, got $45,000 each as well. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's a, 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 a comparable grant sum. And, and you've got to remember as well, we, we're excluding those elements where the owners have chosen to upgrade things like kitchens. That, you know, they're not, they're not heritage. So these, this is, the, this is the, the bones of the building. That we're supporting here, so they are having to invest further sums themselves if they want to to increase the 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 level of amenity in the in the unit. Thanks, um, Mike. Thanks. The funding gap because of the insurance is because the the owners are choosing to um, upgrade it from thirty four percent, which they got um, settled for, up to sixty seven. Sixty seven. Yes. Yeah. So it's a, I guess that's a choice of them to do. It is a choice, but, but it, it gives them that resilience to, to you, that, that if the code changes slightly, you won't get caught and become an earthquake-prone building. Sam. Sorry, just one last quick one. It's just to follow up what I was saying before. So do, do we have a sense of the intention of these buildings once they are repaired? Uh, I'm just not... I can't, I can't find out in here. Are they going to be built and then on sold? Are they going to be built, rented out? Are they going to be built or are they all being moved into by the owners? Do, have you talk through that in your discussions with them? 
No, it's not a conversation I've had. Um, I guess the important thing for us is that they'll continue to be used for, for residential <coughs> purposes yep. as they were originally so, built. Um, the important thing for us is that they'll continue to be used for residential purposes. So that's that, that's been our main concern. Um, they have a history of being owner occupied or rented out. As far as I know, that's going to continue. Okay. Yep, James. Uh, look, what Councillor Major said, I'm, I feel similarly. Um, However, I recognise that there are heritage values, but how many of these do we have on our books? Of, of this, this, um... of this sort of nature, because you know I, I know those flats. I used to party in them, but um, uh, but you know where, where does it well, end? That, well, we can. We... What we're looking at is the heritage values. These are these are the first, the first of their type. They're, they're the prototype designed by well, one well, of the. Yeah. the, the, the no, no, sorry, when I say on our books, on our on our as a response register. That's weird. Yeah. Well, they're on the district plan um, list of, of heritage buildings. We don't have anything else. We don't have anything else like these on on the schedule in the district plan. Um, in terms of modernist post-war buildings, um, it, it, okay. we have yeah. a handful. Okay. The Town Hall, um, Sir Miles Warren's office and flat in Cambridge Terrace is, is similar, but this, you know, this building's of New Zealand architectural significance in terms of the story of how our architecture developed. Well, I'm not being flippant when I say, yeah, and there are similar, and maybe they're following, he was following um, Miles Warren, um, on the corner of Andover and Cheltenham, and they just got re done up. I used to live there, and they were by um, oh God, what's the other Peter Bevan, I think, and they're similar, you know. Um, so that was why I asked how many were on the register here, yeah. mm. and I know that they're on the district plan. Thanks. Anne, we are. Um, I'm, I wanted to follow on a little bit from your comments about um, Sir Miles Warren and how significant um, this is for us as a city, given that we're growing our reputation as being internationally a really interesting place to be, uh, for people to come um, and, and view our architecture. How important is Sir Miles Warren to our city and to our nation? Um, well. Yeah, from an architectural perspective, he, he is hugely important. Um, the, these flats are, were a pivotal work, a, a turning point, if you like. Um, I think he'd just come, he'd come back from England. Um, he had these new ideas about styles, materials, use of concrete. Um, and he, so he, he put those to use in little old Christchurch. Um, and it can be seen as a turning point I guess in, at the start of the development of the Christchurch modernist style, which is our familiar concrete, you know, white painted concrete block buildings, which unfortunately we've, we've lost a lot of those as a result of the earthquakes. But um, this, you know, it really is a key, a, a key stone point in the, at the development of Christchurch and New Zealand architecture. Yeah. And, and they're probably fundamental in, in Miles Warren's career. Without this sort of uh, starting point, every architect of, 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 of significance needs to, to get off the mark. And these were some of those buildings which allowed him to, to, to then proceed to, to bigger things. Without these small steps at the start, there wouldn't be a, a, a Warren and Marnie, potentially. Okay. So I think we need to move on a little bit. So it's, it's clear that they have high heritage value, but the room seems to have some disquiet over the... Um, the amount being um, recommended today. So at this point, do we have a mover for the staff recommendation or for a different amount? So staff recommendation, Jake, um, and Melanie, second. Okay. Um, we will indeed. Um, I'm just, just checking the room at this stage to see if there's anything any further questions or first? Yes, yeah, so checking for foreshadowed or. I'm, I'm happy to foreshadow that we decline the grant. So. 
Well, we, we wouldn't need to foreshadow that. We'd just vote against it. Yeah, well, that's just signal to the room. Potentially. Just whether there was a foreshadowed... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just whether there was a foreshadowed motion um, for a different amount, if anyone was wanting to do that. OK. Um, OK, in that case, uh, Jake will start. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess as the local councillor for this area, I just wanted to set a scene of, of where these flats are located. They're in a um, really unique part of our city, that residential CBD that has a huge amount of history, uh, not just both built, but also um, cultural history in that area as well. And, and um, I, I know uh, better than anyone how, how uh, badly these areas have been affected by, by um, high density, uh, un, you know, poorly thought out and, and um, you know, rubbish buildings, um, <laughs> which I, yeah. Um, and I, I guess I also thought this is, again, a prime piece of CBD real estate that um, is, is it's sitting on valuable land and the owners would have absolutely been better to, to bowl these and, and, and put up something less, um, less sympathetic to the area. So I think we should, we should be mindful of that when, um, when deciding on this. Thank you, Tim. Uh, thank you. Just to kick off, um, it was Warren and Marnie. So um, Morris Marnie was absolutely a genius. And if you've seen his hand-drawn pictures and designs for the town hall, not through CAD but hand-drawn, he was an absolute genius. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Um, I love the irony of this. The um, Dorset Street flats were described as the ugliest buildings in Christchurch. Just want to remind you. And with regards to size, um, if you look at some of the flats that are exorbitant prices at the moment, and one can debate their quality, um, at 600000 and 450000 etc., I think these are a bargain, to be quite honest. And if you look at the land values that the neighbours have been trying to sell one of those places at um, a number of million, um, I think that... Um, it's important heritage to keep because they could be bold because the land value, as Jake has described, per square metre is, I think, well and truly absorbent. But never mind all that. What we're here today is discuss the value of the architecture. That's what we're here to protect. Um, I'm no um, architect and I'm no historian, so I will go on this, the um, recommendations of the, the staff. I, I do debate sometimes about the quality, but it is like art. And the <laughs> irony I love is all the discussion with regards to intensity of intensification, etc., in our city, and the questions on um, architectural value, etc. This is the wonderful thing that they were described as the ugliest buildings in Christchurch, and they are now um, listed as New Zealand. Uh, um, landmark heritage site of buildings. So um, I think it's a, a wonderful irony and I'll be supporting the staff. Thank you, Sam. Uh, yeah, thank you. As sort of uh, mentioned earlier on, uh, by sort of signalling potentially a foreshadow, I won't be supporting this in its current form. And it's not because I don't value heritage in the city. I think that's really important to clarify. Um, but it's a question of priorities across the city at the moment. And this is a significant amount of money uh, that is going into these, uh, these block of flats, effectively, or th these units. Um, probably there's two things that stood out. The first one was around, I think, your question, Sarah, which were very, very good in terms of the budget allocation um, and the need for that being changed over time. And, you know, the answers with respect, I don't think we need to be um, going down a line of because there's money in a budget, we should therefore spend it. Um, you know, it does become frustrating because it becomes a constant excuse uh, or, I guess, a reason to drive a value. Um, but when we're making real sacrifices in the city at the moment, you know, we're having to stop um, unless it gets changed in the LTP, that mobile library van, um, you know, which costs a fraction of this, and a, and a range of other issues uh, that you know, we have to make some real sacrifices. So I would just hate to get to a point where these get rebuilt, repaired, and then potentially, given the market movement, have on sold, and effectively the ratepayers have footed the bill for that. Um, I'm not sure that would be a wise investment for the ratepayers, so I would urge colleagues um, to potentially not support this today, um, while still acknowledging the importance heritage plays in our city. Thanks, Anne. Thank you. Um, I think the ratepayers will be paying, uh, will be investing in heritage, and um, Sir Miles Warren has been described as the doyen of post. Um, uh, well, he's, he describes the first New Zealand to be knighted for services to architecture, and really Christchurch is is Sir Miles Warren's place and known for that. And this is something to celebrate and to treasure. And so um, this is about. Putting a va we can't put a value on these things, an economic value. This is important for us as a city, for us as our identity, so I will be supporting the staff recommendations today. 
Thank you. Mike? And then Melanie? Thanks. I'm unsure if actually some of my colleagues have read the report. This building is currently being repaired. It is not getting demolished. Um, this decision is whether we actually contribute um, to how much these private owners are going to pay to, um, to build them. And the reason why it's actually um, above the insurance settlement is because they're increasing the NPS. So um, I'll actually be agreeing with Sam and will not be um, saying yes to this. Thank you. Um, Melanie. Um, these are Category 1 listed heritage buildings, so I, in my opinion if anyone won't support um, putting money towards these, they shouldn't be supporting any heritage in our city really, because that's clearly the view that they're taking. And it would be good to have more housing available once um, once they're completed, so um, you know, win-win. Um, any further debate? Oh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah um, look. To me, here, it, uh, notwithstanding its um, what is it, level one, um, class one heritage, what, it's like art to me. You know, what's heritage to someone is not necessarily heritage to me, and my heritage can often not be heritage to anyone else. Mm -hmm. So, it's subjective to me, as is art. Um, I, I appreciate the reminder that <laughs> it has been called the ugliest building in the city. And, um, but it was still good to party in, I have to say. <laughs> but on a serious note, you know, I'm struggling with this full stop. Um, and I think that Councillor Macdonald made a very good point, notwithstanding why we're even talking about this uh, through policies and, and so on. The principle is that the mobile libraries, which I'd never use in a month of Sundays, but that is important to the ratepayers and residents of this city. And that's, what, $91,000, I think it was. Well, that's crazy that we say no to that and yes to this. So that's why I'm saying no to this. Um, Aaron? It's been an interesting debate today, um, especially around people's tastes in architecture. Um, and. Uh, and, 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 and it's correct that it is in the eye of the beholder. Um, I do uh, appreciate the value of these to the city. Um, I would have preferred the quantum of the grant was smaller and, uh, and on Mike's point that they hadn't gone so high on the NBS and they'd stuck with the 34 because it would be um, considerably different. Uh, it did say in the report because they're waiting on uh, the seismic strengthenings for the um, next event um, given how often the events come, uh, then you, and I know the Alpine Fault 75% due within a 50-year period, so on and so forth. Um, but if you do the math, you'd actually go with um, the 34 and uh, and just repair again if you had to. Uh, so I, and people would have been safe. So I um, agree with Mike on that one. And so I would have supported a smaller amount, but not this amount. Karen, would you like to foreshadow a motion for a smaller amount? What would that amount be? Up to you. Hasn't he already spoken that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I would be interested to hear if someone else foreshadows a smaller amount. Thank Madam you. Chair. Yep. Morning. Yeah, thank you. I'm also quite struggling with this one, um, but I don't think comparing apples with pears like mobile libraries with a heritage fund is particularly helpful here. We have a heritage fund that we've set up because we... Um, are passionate and committed to re retaining and repairing the heritage that we have left, the little heritage that we have left as a result of our earthquake events. Um, look, I'm happy to take staff advice on this because you are all over the heritage in our city. They've come to you for this. You're recommending it. So on this occasion, because I'm not an expert on this, I'm happy to take staff guidance on this and, um, and support it, particularly in the light of the information that we know that this is a renowned building throughout New Zealand. So I think it's in our interest to retain it. So in, in, in light of that, I'm going to support this today. Thanks, Pauline. Um, and I think I'd like to add as well that, um, you know, I think that we have a fund which, as councillors, we signed off on in the annual plan last year, and we signed off a, a certain amount that could be spent up to, 
you don't have to spend it all, absolutely. Um, but we also opened applications, and I think that if someone with a Category 1 building who has applied for this fund doesn't qualify, uh, I think we really need to seriously relook at the fund. Um, and when it comes to the, the mobile library, let's remember that as councillors we agreed um, during the uh, long-term plan process to propose that that um, be closed at the same time as signing off on a proposal that left heritage funding there. So I think that's a decision for a future discussion over the LTP after submissions. Um, these are Category 1 um, buildings and I'm happy to support um, some funding for them today. Like Aaron, I'm a bit concerned about the amount um, and so I'd like to foreshadow a motion um, of 240,000, which is 30,000 each, um, uh, should this uh, resolution fail. Uh, Yanni. I want to check with staff, sorry, I'm just out of a proposal to reduce their quantum, but there's a equip grant. Is that um, only paid out if it's matched by the local authority? Uh, no. That grant's independent of... It's totally independent, oh, yeah. um, and it's only for two of the flats, which had an even lower insurance settlement than, okay. than they Okay, cool. Made. And just, um, if we go down to 240 or, or 200, this would still qualify for a full covenant? We're in debate. Yeah. So, well, you've, you've foreshadowed okay. a thing. Yeah, but, so. we, but if we get... Okay, so... In it's that to case, inform how I vote clarify. on the substantive. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So the the um, covenant would still be in place. Just to uh, clarify, Brendan, with a lower the, grant. The, the covenant, the covenant, um, yes, the the covenant comes in at fifteen thousand. Yeah. So it's a limited covenant. Yeah. Right. And Yanni, do you want to get back to your debate? Oh, sorry. I, I thought um, if it was over one hundred and fifty thousand, it was a full covenant. That's right. The, the, there is a difference. The, there's the, there's a limited covenant, which is between fifteen and. 150, and then once you're over 150, then it becomes a full covenant. Right. A full covenant is in perpetuity um, yeah. and has has more um, constraints within the document. It's a it's a more. Um, yeah. But the key robust. question is, with serious foreshadowed quantum, the full covenant would still be able to be put on this property. Full covenant only only, only if the owners are, are are accepting of that. There is no okay. there is no requirement in the grant criteria to have a full covenant below that figure. Okay. You only you only you only go to that full covenant once you get a grant of over 150,000. Yeah. Okay. So any debate, Yanni? Oh, I, I think um, you know, I, I support heritage in our city and I, I appreciate the significance of these buildings, but I think the other thing that we also need to be mindful of is actually we've got a number of heritage items in our city, so I am concerned about the quantum of the grant. And I would prefer a reduction, um, so I'd prefer to support the foreshadowed um, amendment rather than the substantive, because we've got so many other priorities for heritage in our city as well. Yeah. We just heard from um, a group this morning. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any further debate? Jake, would you like to close? No? All right, Jimmy? Because originally I'm reluctant to debate, but now I'm still concerned about the amount of the, the, the funding, you know, because why? If they go with the insurance, they full cover $1.5 million. But they want to upgrade, upgrade uh, from the 34% MPS to the 67 They have a show for the $1.4 million. So actually, this, you know, when they request, we go and find in 25%, but the amount is still quite a lot, particularly compared to pure one, maybe lax wine. You know, it's a, 366 the case, they're a big amount. But your full cover, we don't need to grant anyone. So I, I'm still concerned <laughs> this amount. I'd like to foreshadow, you know, can minimize. I'd like to go to the either Yanni or Seva's one, two, 200K or 240, because 366 case, they're a big amount from the repair. I think it's unfair to go to those the repair. Thank you very much. If there's no further debate, I'll put the um, staff recommendation. Um, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against? No. no. I declare that lost. Um, and we'll move to the... Well, it's, it's lost and we move to the next one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, uh, so move to the um, uh, foreshadowed motion, which is the same except for the, the dollar amount. Um, it's 240,000, which makes them 30,000 each. And I don't think we need any more debate on that one. <laughs> um, do I have a seconder for that, though? Jake, thank you. So that's me and Jake. Oh, I know, you can't... See. No, no, you can't move an amendment. You can't do an amendment. This is a different motion. Yeah. It's a new, mo new motion altogether. So Jake's fine. Yeah. Um, right. In that case, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 Any against? No. Aye. Uh, division. Yeah. Councillor Chen. Yes. Councillor Chu. No. Councillor Kogel. Councillor Cotter? Yes. Councillor Daniels? No. Councillor Davidson? No. Councillor Galloway? Yes. Councillor Goff? No. Councillor Johansson? Yes. Councillor Kewan? Yes. Councillor McDonald? No. Councillor McClellan? Hey, yes. Councillor Scandrift? No. Is that no? No. Councillor Templeton? Aye. Declare that carried. Thank you very much. Okay, and now we move back to uh, the Heritage Incentive Grant for 5.5.